this is constant pursuit of things you know improvements a pursuit uh, uh, and happiness is a pursuit but these things are really overrated because mm. in order to do that and to say I want to improve every day means I face every day not being good enough mm. <laughs> oh, right? man. Wait, that's like that's damaging for my brain right now <laughs> oh my gosh right. Right. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm just like, I don't know anymore. And it hurts my brain some days. <laughs> like I, I, I don't have anything. Game set and match. Um, okay, well, we're just going to say welcome to Talk Tennis. Okay. <laughs> Joining me today is Tim Foley. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. I pulled up the original episode because a lot's happened in two years, or maybe not a lot's happened in two years. I don't know. You tell me. How's, uh, how's life changed? Well, not moving around so much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, so two years ago, you had just moved back to slow after traveling, and you were stationed, not stationed, but it makes it sound like you were in the military. <laughs> you were in Chile. Yeah, we were. St- well, we were stuck there for the pandemic, and then- but we had done this trip. It was we were starting to wrap up i don't know like 2000 we were thinking 2020 ish we'd come back and figure out what to do but then that pandemic hit so we were stuck in chile essentially yeah. for almost two years oh that's wild wait just here in the 2020 like, i know it's weird yeah we're gonna talk about some weird stuff but like i feel like i still feel like those three years didn't happen like from 2020 to 2023 well for sure like the whole time when people were quarantined yeah that seems like impossible I was just so Hayden. Do you know Hayden from yeah. our Australia side? He just walked in. I have not seen him since the day BMP got canceled, which was the start of the pandemic for us in the tennis world. And it was so wild just to like see him and realize it's been three years. It's so actually almost four. It's it's wild. Yeah, it's it's hard to believe that happened. Yeah, it, it really is. It really it, is. It, and I feel like a lot of things have changed, but like nothing's changed. But like the way people, I don't, do you feel like people have changed? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. We used to go to a restaurant. Ken's coming in today. Yeah, I so, was going to ask you. So uh, we used to go to a restaurant every Thursday night and we would wait. Yeah. Maybe 45 minutes sometimes. And now you go back there it, and the food hasn't changed. Nothing's changed. There's no wait anymore. This was in downtown Mountain View. Yeah, it's a pretty nice area, right? So it's like n- people just seem to be living differently. People are living differently. People are acting differently. Yeah. I know I've changed. <laughs> well, yeah, and I was—you were—I think we talked about this, but I was thinking during the quarantine, anything that you're not doing now, will you do it again? Yeah. Right. I, like, well, I don't know. And then, like, talk about like people's capacity for endurance <laughs> like stopped i remember like right when well maybe not for you because you're you i feel like you're less immune to these like <laughs> daily pro- not problems but issues but even like i remember when we were out of quarantine it was like going to a grocery store was such a tedious task and it now or maybe it's just me because i like to fill the day but like some days you're like i'm exhausted how did i used to do that yeah well i mean it was mildly stressful for a while to just yeah. go out yeah, that's for sure. Right. Yeah. And so I I don't feel it as much anymore. No, me neither. Uh, but I remember we were on a subway in Santiago, sort of at the height of the thing. And we had to go to the U.S. Embassy. The kids' passports were expiring. Yeah. We had to make this trip up there. And we were in the subway. Everybody's all masked up. And But, you know, subways are subways, right? And yeah. life was going on fairly normalish. And then it packs in and you hear people coughing and you're like, oh, my God. Holy cow. What? Even this morning, someone sneezed and I looked at right. that. <laughs> like, could you not? <laughs> Just right. kidding. Okay. Well, anyways, back to tennis, <laughs> which luckily tennis was always there for us through the pandemic. We love that about that. I don't even know how we got on the pandemic. And then you couldn't even, but you couldn't even play during that time. If you, the courts were locked, you couldn't go in there. I mean, that's the craziest thing of all, right? So my sanctuary, this is full story, uh-huh. was slow high. The slow high courts were open really? and I was going there several times a week and that's what I like that was my place like I was still I mean it was several people's place a lot of people were playing there and it was just like you could go and you saw people that you knew and it felt normal and like that's amazing that was amazing um 
but full circle, <laughs> since in the past couple of years, you've been coaching with us at Slow High. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not really going to talk about that specifically because that would be a whole podcast of its own. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna ask you if you want to join me Wednesday night to go to the awards banquet. Oh yeah, I'll go. Yeah. Oh thank God, because I that's, don't want to be by myself. That's sports night, right? Sports yeah. night Wednesday. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's thanks. next Wednesday. Yes, yeah. six p.m. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. So we were gonna have our team and the parents, and we'll be doing awards and all that fun stuff. Okay, I wanted to talk about your new concept. Well, it's probably not new. Oh yeah, but it's okay. That's just a st- what you did, what we did when we were talking about it before. Yeah, that's just sort of the starter. Okay, right. Let's start. With so the you starter. hit. So you hit. <laughs> yeah. And wait, tell the people what you tasked me with this week. Okay, so the it was the idea was if you could sort of hypnotize yourself. Yes. Right. And that so hypno, hypnotize is a is a contaminated word. It, it's like kind of woo mumbo jumbo. Yeah. Right? So I don't mean it literally like right. that, but just sort of. So you can remove the specific thoughts, get beyond this, you know, this sort of, uh, you know, very directive, sort of prescriptive turn step hit stuff, Mm -hmm. right? And just pick up on other information without thought. Right. Without trying. Yeah. Right. Take your attention from one area and just let it drift. Yes. And so I said I was going to put on my music (laughs) and try my best. And I actually, I still haven't done it. The, the kids these days play tennis with headphones in. And I, I still have been wanting to do that. I need to do that. And then some people say you have to only do one because then you're at equilibrium and your sound and everything. Anyways, yeah. that's going to be something I try to. But trying to get in that state is forcing something, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I instantly realized that my rituals help me get there. And so like, I know a lot of people that when I talk about rituals, they kind of are like, that's stupid, that's silly. But like, I think that's what calms my nervous system down. And so that's what I instantly like went back into is like, I can be a very ritual oriented person because the brain is a little messy up there. And like, I have certain triggers to bring me back, not necessarily like back to the moment, but to like shut the rest of it up okay so that's interesting but you never learned any of those things on purpose no right no you never right you never said i'm going to develop this technique so that when i get tight or when something bothers me maybe no it's automatic i think it's automatic okay. right <laughs> and so what i'm saying is what we what we often think we're learning we're not learning right if you so if we you take a step back just just tennis teaching in general right? yeah it's like puppeteering yeah, that's what it's like. It's it's very it's bondage. Yeah. So wh- this is what happens all the time. Somebody comes and they say, "Here's a, a typical tennis lesson. How do I hit a kick second serve?" Yeah. Okay. And then here comes this list of directives: do this, this, and this. Yeah. And the first question asked every single time: Did I do it right? Right. They don't even notice if the serve went in anymore. They don't notice if, if it was what they wanted. Now they're looking for the approval of the instructor, right? The puppet master. Yes. And they're saying, "Did I get it right?" Yeah. That most people never recover from that. They spend their whole life hitting, trying to sort of, you know, ape these uh, movements. That's not playing. That's not the game. They, and they never develop the authorship, right, of their own game. And so, you know, the suggestion is that you're learning these things unconsciously. It's, it's we're trying to, to be, uh, direct attention in different areas. Mm-hmm. And so you, you'll see it everywhere that people go through these, these uh, performance rituals and uh, unconsciously. Yeah. When, we, when I had my first child, we're in the room, and then, you know, most of it's waiting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and in this kind of waiting, it's, this is the best time to be a guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, you're like, well, I'm sure that hurts, but... Uh, well, yeah. I'm good. Uh, yeah. I don't need an epidural. <laughs> yeah. so then, and then it gets close, and the doctor comes in, and now he starts going through a ritual. Mm-hmm. He's counting mm-hmm. up his mm-hmm. things. He's mm-hmm. moving him here, and I'm thinking to myself, holy cow, this guy's doing... Right. He's playing tennis. And, and nobody in a medical school says, here's the ritual to do this. That's true. These things you learn yeah. unconsciously, right? So what you're really learning is how to deal with this. And it's like you're saying, right? It's it's sort of zeroing in your focus. It's getting time mm-hmm. to perform. Mm-hmm. 
You know, and this is a special circumstance. This is not just playing tennis. We're right. talking performing tennis right. now, right? Yeah. And when you w- use that word perform, it, it brings in this connotation of acting, right? Yeah. And that's where it gets interesting now. Like, what, what are we really doing? Let's exclude just the... Yeah, that's the, so interesting. Because, like, when you say acting, then I instantly think about, like, even here, like, we're on video sometimes. And while it is authentic and completely, like, us, and it's not, like, an act you definitely show up in conversation differently yeah. when a camera's yeah. on even right now like oh okay let me change my shirt let me you know like that even so it's right. e- like yeah anyways performance and it's acting. Per- it's, per- <laughs> it's performative right yeah and even the words we use hint at it yeah high performance yeah oh gosh right <laughs> yeah it's, we're performing mm-hmm. okay and performing is is really everything but natural and you know, this is what we're trying to get to. I don't know what we're trying to get to. That's what yeah, I'm I don't know about. what we're trying to get to either. <laughs> and so it's just, you look at the typical teaching, and we've been dealing with this all with the coaching, right? We're, we're trying to access parts of a person's mind, yes. in a sense. But those, when we try to do it, we find they're already stuck. They're already full. They're all, it's so, I, <laughs> <laughs> that. It's so wild to me. And I... Maybe it's a generational thing. Maybe it's just different people, different personalities. But like, I'm kind of that person where I'm like, dream big. Like, nothing's too big. Like, do your thing. But there's such a cap now, like on so many people. We're like, okay, well, let's bring it to the team. Nothing specific, but we went to go play uh, state regionals and. We knew that the team we were going to, or I knew that the team we were going to play was going to be several levels higher than our players. Right. So trying to prepare our players for to see a player at this level, you know, I wasn't like straight up like, hey, you're going to get your butts kicked because I honestly believe that anyone on any given day can True. win a match. But they walked into that club and like jaws dropped and they were like, oh, man. And I feel like they were like, Doop, we already know that these players are better than us. We've, we've talked about this. Right. Like, they're happy to be there, happy to show up. I've seen it at the pro level, too. You see someone make it to a final. They're happy to be there, happy right. to show up. Yeah, and so that's also a weird thing because you don't want to be miserable. Right? So you would say, it's, like, it's at, interesting. A certain, at a certain level, everybody's miserable 99% of the time. Maybe yes. even a hundred percent of the time. No, I would. When, when it, I would agree yeah. with that. So, I mean, more you, so lately too. You, you know, if you okay, so go back to the beginning here. You're, you're dealing with a, a newish player, you know, and they say, "I want a lesson." Okay, what do you want? I want to hit my forehand better. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. What does that mean? <laughs> right. Because against who and what conditions? You know, the game changes every every shot. Yeah. Different. And if you really drill down. What they're saying is, I want to win more. Yeah. Because the perception is, the more I win, the happier I'm going to be. Right. Oh, my gosh. Uh, which would mean, uh, uh, so then it would mean, if you, if you really followed that through, which most people almost never follow a thought, a thought all the way through to its end, that the top players in the world would be the happiest, happiest people on the earth. And richest. Right. <laughs> and they're, they're miserable. Yeah. Right. They're not like actively miserable, like I'm, but they're so stressed out. There's one I'm thinking of specifically that like does not look like they are authentically living life because they're so yeah. bogged down. It's a very stressful existence, right? Yes. And so, but we don't look up there and say like, oh, I don't want to be like that. Yeah. So, you know, winning doesn't make you happier. Right? I, I, and I had an intense conversation about this um, this week, actually, with my own mother, <laughs> who you've met Your mom's now. Your great. Your mom is super fun to watch a match with. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how, oh gosh, um, something had come up and it was just like this triggering thing because I, we've talked about this since I've known you. Like for me, I have for so long in my life, like place value on winning, losing, making the right shot, missing, like all of that. And like with the team, my goal was to never make it about winning and losing. Like it was never like your value does not change if you win. Your value does not change if you lose. We're not going to treat you differently if you win. We're not going to treat you differently if you lose. And that was such like a big thread. And my mom was like, I know. I was so proud of you, blah, blah, blah. Because like it's still hard. I'm 40 and it's still really hard to like just turn that off. The day I hit with Booney and I was practicing like getting out of my head, I could tell when it came back. Right. 
And there was specifically one moment, and if you've seen me practice in real life, you guys will know I get I'm a very different person on the court. I get very upset at myself, <laughs> incredibly mad. And there's like nothing in the world that is, feels as bad as my mistakes when I'm in that mode. And it's just usually a loud scream or I yeah, anyways. Um so yes, I don't know <laughs> where that conversation got triggered. What where were we saying? What <laughs> Well, it's this idea of when you I mean are you playing? Oh, right. happiness and winning and losing and yeah. Right. I mean, are you pl- so the idea the real concept is is as I was thinking about it, playing to win is playing against play. play yes. Right? Because play's in the way of winning. Yes. So you don't even want the play. You just want the win. You just yeah, right. <laughs> right? And so but then when you say that to somebody who's asking so if, no, you just want to win. Okay, if you say uh, say fine, just say that. I just want to win. Now, um only play people who Do, just who are, who are, you're better than, <laughs> yeah. right? And they say, "Oh, well, no, that's not how I want to win." Exactly. Right? Or you say, "Cheat," and this is what kids do all the time. See, kids grow up in this culture where winning's everything, right? So you see it. You go to the junior tournaments, and once they decide, so nobody says like, "Okay, not nobody," but it's really not coached like anymore. Like the, it's okay the to game, lose in the first round. The game round. is up here, yeah. and you're down here. Yeah. You respect the game. This is how I came up. You respect the game. Anything you do that undermines the game, my dad would he pull me off, off the court. Off the court, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and then the kids realize I, I'm not probably not going to win this match, so they cheat, and it makes perfect sense, right? It's the only yeah. option left. <laughs> yeah, I guess right? so. And then they, but so you say that to people, well, then you just cheat, and they say, well, I don't want to win like that either, <laughs> right? And then you realize, well, okay, so you're not about winning. Yeah. And now, to to beat a really good player, right? And again, I don't know that it's the objective necessarily, but we do keep score and stuff, right? But so the, the objective of keeping score is to come out on ahead if you can. But to beat a very good player, honestly, is a really tough task. Yeah. Right? We've dedicated most of our lives to doing this. <laughs> yeah. It's a very tough task. And so it can't be all about winning. I know. It can't. And that's the shift, though. And like, I think we do this because we want to have fun. <laughs> well, I I, th- I think it's true. Yeah. I mean, first of all, we want the drama. We want to excite ourselves. I love the drama. Yeah, we. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of tension. The drama comes up. You there's nothing that feels better than prevailing f- over the drama. Yeah. Like when it works out, you're like, wow, that was like. But then again, when most people do it, they're, they're like, at the end, I missed too many backhands. Oh my god! They no, never, it's never, the worst. Yeah. yeah, you win a match, or you like all season. It's like. I'm like, oh, we're going to lose this one. Oh, we're going to lose this one. Oh, we're going to lose this one. And then it's like we win, we smoke them, 9-0. And I'm like, well, right. we didn't do this right. We didn't. <laughs> right. Even like from a coaching perspective, it's crazy. And even like at the top, you take a guy like Djokovic, right? He's going to be at the I – mean, he's, he's as good as a person could be. He's going to be at the top for this period of time, and then it's going to be downhill from there. See. And, and then it's going to be this brief window where he won everything. And then – but if you look at the overall trajectory of his life, mostly losing. Right. And the wild thing to me is, like, he literally is, like, at the, I don't know, he's been at the peak forever, but, like, he does not exude happy to me. He exudes on edge. Am he, I wrong? He, he's, he, he exudes a guy to me who's just going to work. Right? That's a lot of, it's a just, lot of hours. It's work. It's not, I wouldn't say it's fun for him. Probably the moment of winning is fun, but the rest of it's a lot of hard work. I mean, if we're to believe the stories, it's a lot of sacrifice, you know. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that's not tennis anymore, right? That's a job. I'm right? going to, yeah. I don't want to cut you off. Do you have no, okay. go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm going to bring it back to Oak walked in this morning. And <laughs> he's one of our racket experts. Super great personality. Yeah. Like, always happy. I don't think I've ever seen him mad. Like, really, like, is one of those people that when you watch him on the court, you're like, cool, that guy gets it. Right. He's having fun. So he hadn't played for nine days, and he said he just got on the court for the first time in nine days. He was stoked. And I'm like, awesome. Who'd you play with? What'd you do? How'd it go? And he was talking about how he played with Michael, another guy internally who plays a bunch. And they did, what did he call it? Tug of war game. So you can only get points when you win the point and you go from, what, 10 to 20? I don't know. Anyways, he's like, yeah, it's really tough. It's like grinding. And then he goes, and I peer, pulled out a pure drive. And he goes, it's okay to have fun sometimes on the court. <laughs> and I was like, sometimes? Right. <laughs> you guys were practicing <laughs> yeah. and playing fun games that didn't matter. 
Yeah, that, okay, so there's the mentality. <laughs> and so. he, like, allowed himself to have fun. For the first time in nine days, he hadn't touched her. <laughs> right. It's, it's interesting, right? It's, and it, it's the this mentality. Idea, do we have to, that we're always working. And that somehow play, I mean, it's almost a cultural thing, right? But we just look down on play. And we look down on play to the degree that we invent reasons for it. Sociologists look back and they go, there's a reason we play. And that's so we hunt better or things like that. Okay. Right? Yeah. So there always has to be some practical application to everything that we do, which I think makes us a little crazy in the long run. It makes us a lot crazy. Yeah. <laughs> We're the craziest or crazy. Uh, and, and, you know, in an office, my dad used to work in an office and nec- he was next door to his, his golf club. And so he'd leave early, you know, in a stressful day to go hit balls. But he wouldn't just go play golf because he'd tell everybody, I'm going to work on my game. Right? <laughs> Because if you say, I'm going to play golf, it's like, oh, Everyone's really? like, cool, yeah. yeah. But yeah. if you're working on your game, okay, yeah. That's yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, it's really, it's quite neurotic when you think about it. Mm-hmm. And then you take it to the learning side. That's, that's the craziest side of all. It's crazy. I mean, we, I think, this is something we've talked about a lot. I think tennis is the dark ages of learning. We're teaching the way we taught 100 years ago. I mean, it makes absolutely no sense. We... You know, everybody, you look around. I don't know why this doesn't occur to anybody, right? You go to a tournament, and everybody around you is doing the exact same drills <laughs> in the same way. And, and so, again, not that it's all about competition, but you, when you're at a tournament, you're looking for a competitive advantage. What advantage do you have by doing the same thing everybody else is doing? Do you really think you're going to work harder than Djokovic? It's like an impossibility. I know. And nobody stops and goes like, wait, wow, this is crazy. Right? Right? No, let's just do it harder. I I'm, I can hear the comment section now because I'm laughing a lot because <laughs> it's so true and it just feels like so much of real life. It's wild. And you and I both kind of approach tennis and coaching slightly. Well, you're more different than me. <laughs> 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 like, But both of us are le- – we do not lo- – or I will speak for myself. I'm not a technical coach. I am not right. interested in telling you that you have, like, slightly the wrong degree bend in your elbow. Like, that's not my vibe. I'm saying, hey, this is where I want you to hit the ball. What's the best way for you to do that? How can you execute that? Um, and you're even better at that stuff. I don't know that there is a better. Oh, Right? I mean, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just to me, where do you want the focus to be? Like if I t- train you to be a puppet, I didn't do anything for you. But that's the thing. It's wild is because like when we approach those kinds of conversations, especially with high school players, especially with anyone under, let's say, 30, people look at you like you're psycho and also like, no, nah, I'm going to go pay $100 for the club yeah. down the street to give me like two forehands, two backhands, an approach shot and two volleys. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, and so... I mean, you're, you're fighting against this sort of entrenched mindset That's if you stop to think about it, it's very obvious that it doesn't work. Uh, right? yes. But nobody stops <laughs> to think about it. And part of this is, is because I think, right, people just want to fit in. Yeah. So if you do what everybody else is doing, okay, it may not work, but at least you don't look like a nut. But if you go off and you just do your own thing, if you say, I'm not, gonna, I, I'm not doing this drilling anymore, I don't know what I'm going to do, right? Mm-hmm. But it's not going to be like that. Mm-hmm. Everybody's like, what? what? Have you lost your mind? Yeah. And then if it doesn't work out for you, they're like, I knew you were an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and then that also goes to the whole goal conversation because we've talked about how people grow up just wanting to be the best, even though they have literally no reason for that to be their end game. Well, yeah, but how could and you what even, is the best? Okay, how could you even have that as an end game I don't in the beginning? Know. I know. First, it's like this is the pathway model, right? This, yes. This is a, a big issue. Yeah. Path- we put everybody on the pathway, and then can we, can we use like agencies like the USTA? Can we say it? Like the agency's model of player development is you throw a bunch of rats in the box, and the one that chooses way out is the one, right? That doesn't, it obviously doesn't work. I mean, we just had Angela Kulikov on our podcast. She was chosen basically at age eight by the USTA to be the one. And spoiler alert, she's not the one. Right. And she, like, talking to her, and I will reference this podcast because it's very interesting to me because she, she's still quite young. She's only in her second going on third year on tour. She's already decided that she's going to be doubles only, which that is a conversation I can say might lead her to more happiness. But um, she's still grappling with this idea of like, well, I've already decided I'm not going to be a singles player, but maybe next year I'll, right. be, I'll be back on the singles tour. And like, you can see like she references like all these times where she lost and like, 
she's it's like weighing so heavy on her and it's like wait but that doesn't make you a good or bad person that doesn't make you right I don't know. But and isn't it, don't you but think? But how do you? Okay, so you came up to the system. Don't you find that? I endem- didn't come up. Well, I mean, yes, in a way, no. yeah. But I mean, yeah. don't you? Didn't you find that endemic in the system? I, it like feels like such a bigger conversation that also is parallel to our society. Which, like, I love that you are not like you don't succumb to the societal <laughs> stuff in the United States because you are so authentically like. You do your thing. You ride your bike. You're with your family. Like, it's so nice to just be like, I don't give a F <laughs> what anyone else is doing. And, like, this makes me happy and I'm going to do it. And, like, we all, like, put a, like talk about that and, like, put in quotes. Like, oh, I'm doing this because it makes me happy and I'm going to say no to this because I don't want to. But, like, at the end of the day, we're still like, oh, my God, what's someone thinking about me? Right. And yeah. that is, like, tennis. Like, oh, my God, I didn't go to yeah. USC. I didn't play number one, and I wasn't ranked top. You know, like, you start, like, negotiating with yourself. What's the best? I remember <laughs> – I just can't stop, stop talking now. But I remember even coming out of college, it, people would, like, ask me, like, oh, where'd you go? Where'd you play? And I'd say, oh, University of New Mexico. We were ranked top 25 in the nation. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, right. like, we might have been 23. And I was like, I just wanted, you know, to feel that – value which oh oh that's not that's not it it's but it's tough you've been marinating in this thing your whole life yeah right and so and and again every time you 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 start to dig down you get to stuff you don't want to deal with that's how people are right you get down (laughs) you're like okay this is bs but i'm just gonna let it sit for now Mm. and that's not me i dig it all i want to i mean (laughs) i I, I, minus the emotions yeah (laughs) So it's just the way I, <laughs> this is also the world's weird, you know? Because like, you're not supposed to be emotional. Well, it's, it's, you find that like, it's a separate conversation, right? But your emotions mislead you. Do they? Oh, they do. Yeah, they absolutely do. I mean, that's part of a bigger conversation. <laughs> it's not that they're a problem. It's just that you recognize they will mm. mislead you. And now I'm like laughing through it <laughs> as I'm like feeling the pain. It's like, right. yeah, it's misleading. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not, I mean, they're, they're, it's a natural part of being a human. But you also learn that they are very misleading. I mean, this idea that you can just trust your oh. emotions. You can't trust your emotions. Well, yet. it's also like the – it's. The, <laughs> I told you we're going there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the emotions paired with the mind and the thoughts. And, like, that's where you actually need to go back into the meditative state. Like, I had an issue internally this week where I, like, wanted to talk to someone about a project that started kind of sounding like it was going sideways. And the first thing that this person let me know is, like, it's not about you. Like this response doesn't have to do with you. But in my head, I'm like, this person can't stand me. They hate me. They don't understand. They think I'm stupid. Like all these things. And it's like the emotions paired with that. If only I just like could just stop and let, I don't know. Anyway, it's the same as tennis. When you're spiraling, you can't stop missing. And Yeah. I mean, and then, okay. So you say, okay, put a person on a ball machine. Which is, by the way, is a total waste of time. But put them it's on a ball fun, machine. It's fun though. Sometimes it is just fun. to hit. Yeah, it's just you hitting, but it's it doesn't. But it's not practice. There's no or, transfer from yeah. that to actual math no, play. No, no. But this is a person who is f- far enough along they can hit 300 balls in a row, no problem, right? You put them in a match, they can hit five. I know. It's a very different. So it's a very different construct, and part of it is so. Let's talk about how we you you know in my world how I would deal with players. This is why I like. JV over varsity because varsity <laughs> is already filled. I mean, their mind is done. You, there's, you can't really get through to them. Yeah, I and, tried. <laughs> and even even then, the parents will say, like, even if you could, the parents are like, no, 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 you're not messing with this project right now, right? And they've already invested in their coach several thousand dollars in several years, and this is all, you know, that's that's the way that's going to be. And JV, no, you can experiment, and nobody cares. That's true. They're just happy their their kids are out there playing, and the kids are just happy to be out there playing. Yeah. And so you can experiment when you watch them struggle. You say like, okay, well, you know, what's going on? Well, I'm, I'm afraid I might lose. Why do you care? Yeah. And, and the thing about, we always say this, if you have good enough strokes, you'll be good. And then, of course, oh, it doesn't work. Yeah. And they say in the end, well, that's mental, <laughs> right? Well, if it's going to end mental, why don't we start there? Why don't we just start at the mental thing and assume the strokes take care of themselves? Because they do. The research shows that if you just give, let people play, the strokes do develop along similar lines. It's, it seems to be a byproduct of a human interacting with the tennis ball, right? 
But then you say like, okay, tell me why you need to win. Yeah. Because the reason you need to win is the reason is the reason that you don't. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so then you get to these really deep questions, which is why do I need that to validate me? And isn't that crazy? You're asking me? teenagers, like right. youngins this because they've already formed these thoughts. Right. Oh, at, they're worried at, about first choice college at 10 years old now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I it's know. I think. Fairly stressful. I, I think say. we both, there are, uh, I don't know. I'm sure a few, maybe some of the parents listen to this podcast. I doubt it, but maybe. Yeah. But I know, um, yes, it's such, it's so interesting. We've talked about this, but like they're so, they have to go to the best school and. Right. It's con- all consuming. These kids are, it sucks. It's, I think that's very rough. Right? Yeah. And I think to measure yourself along those lines is very rough. And I think it's important to really understand that the reason you want to win is the reason, and the reason you need to win is the reason that you don't. Yeah. And then right there is you get a player who comes along uh, who has that understood. Yeah. Right? who digs into themselves and say, hey, winning is a little bit more fun, granted, yeah. but I'm not going to stick my life on it. Did you have players, you don't have to say anyone's names, but did you find that you found any players on JV that w- gave that to you or like were genuinely like, eh? <laughs> and not because they just didn't care because <laughs> I know yeah. there might have been. Yeah, there. I mean, uh, there were a couple, you know, that you'd see this, this thing they could just play. Yeah. Right? And then... It, most of them know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because even though even though they don't they didn't have a lot of experience with tennis, they yeah. have a lot of experience in their minds with success and failure. Yeah. No, I I'm thinking of one player in particular. I think she might have been the coolest one on your team. Um, just because she was someone that came from she came from a tennis parent mm-hmm. with very well, I would say that the parent did have expectations for them, but also, like, the daughter had taken some time off of playing tennis and literally showed up at tryouts with, like, a junior racket. Right. And then to see, like, they bl- blossom through the season, I thought, just not even as a tennis player, like, as a person, right. which I thought was awesome. Because at first you're thinking, like, oh, they don't fit in. Right. This is going to be rough. But opposite, yeah. I think. So, you see, that's what's cool about tennis. Yeah. That's what, so when you talk to people why they play and they say they want to win, right? The other the suggestion is really that there's some aspect of the game that appeals to them. Yeah. It could be the sensation of hitting the ball or yeah. the sound, or it could be just the, the social aspect of it. Yeah. There's right? a lot of that too. <laughs> you know, being outside in the sun, the social aspect. Yeah. And then all these things are attainable by anybody. And this is the problem with the pathway. Is yeah. that we're putting blinders on people and we're saying, no, you, it, it only matters if you get to this point. If you don't get to this point, it's all been a failure. Because if you asked someone like, hey, why do you love tennis? And they said, oh, because I love being outside in the sun. Right. That people are going to be like, oh, that's lame. Yeah, well, yeah, but in this <laughs> so world, right? But then you, you say like, who am I pleasing? Yeah. I'm pleasing yeah. a bunch oh, of nut jobs. Uh, see, that's what we're going back to. Yeah. yeah. Who, who am I? Who's, whose opinion have I pinned myself to? And if you look at them, their lives are disasters. And you say, I want these people. I, I care what these <laughs> How people. How do we make it stop, though? <laughs> you just, you, you just, you stop. Who cares? Yeah, I mean. F the noise. Well, yeah, I mean, but in the end, I think, like, if, if life responds to anything, like, I don't believe the hard work story, that's, that's baloney. I mean, yeah, hard work, but you know how many hardworking There's, people have failed, right? Really hardworking people. How many really smart people, you know, have not achieved what they hope to achieve you know if the, if the world responds to anything it's sincerity yeah right? that's true and, and most people aren't sincere they do one thing for other motives there's always a motive a, an ulterior motive behind what they do yeah you know and that's the problem and i and somehow life just seems to sniff that out <laughs> Oh man, I have thoughts. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm just like, I don't know anymore. Yeah, I'm playing to win is insincere, right? Oh, I hate Why would that. you even want? I mean, I've asked this question a million times with people. You, you're working with people, they're losing their minds, right? They're throwing their racket around. And you're like, okay, why, why are you. It's Mike. What, <laughs> why are you here right now? Well, I want to get good. Why do you want to get good at something that you hate? Are you. Right? It's not going to get any better. Right? This, this doesn't change. This <laughs> dynamic doesn't change. There's never a moment. Right? If, if I could take you 
If I could take a, a video of you right now, right, and show you to your 12-year-old self, you'd be thrilled to hit the ball you hit. Mm. <laughs> right? You would be thrilled, but you're not happy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> right? if, if I could take the career you had and show it to your twelve-year-old self, you'd be like, "No way! That would be, that's, that's awesome." Yeah, right? but not, it, it's never awesome. It's never, when you're in it, there's never a moment where you're like, "Wow, this is cool." Yeah, right? no, or like you have moments of it. I mean, it's you have moments of it. I think, and it's because even for through the season, there were moments where I'm like, "I really want this feeling to stick around." And like, if I'm having a bad day at work, I'm gonna try to go back right. to this feeling. Sorry, I should have been hitting yeah. the table. But it's so interesting how those moments are so fleeting. And it's hard to like f get back there, feel that again. Like, and this is gonna sound like BS, but it's true. The My favorite moment of this season still is the cancer match that we did or the cancer fundraiser match we did. And like being able to come together and like, the girls played for something bigger and like i don't know two of our players lost their dad to cancer and they right. got to tell their story and i think that for me like was the feeling that i'm like i just want to hang on to this and then a week goes by and you get some emails from parents that right. like stress you out and you're like and it's gone yeah oh uh, it's you can't hang on to it it's like working out and the the what is the word that i always use the endorphin high it's like you gotta go back and do it again to get it. But like then that creates a weird thing because you get that high though when you win. Yeah, for like ten seconds. But it's still right. I mean, you I think don't know. about it, right? You, even even if you win the tournament. Yeah. I mean, how many times has this experience? Okay, here's a tough match. You get through it. Okay, match point. You're completely like, oh god, and then you win and you're really happy for about 10 seconds and then you're like, oh, I got another match Monday. I know, right? but it's still. But it's just for 10 seconds. Yeah. Okay. And and so that's like, that just, it's, it's, it's insincere. It's insincere. It is. It, it, it's the ego. It's doing I it keep for this, about the yeah, ego. It's doing it for this, for this feeling, right? The feeling just, just like, you probably didn't see it coming in the cancer match and then it was on you and yeah. it came because it was like all sincere. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and you can't live in that state. No, well, why I mean, not? <laughs> well, I don't. I mean, because it's just it just doesn't. That's not life. Yeah. It's just, you don't. You know, this idea of of this is constant pursuit of things. You know, improvements a pursuit, uh, uh, and happiness is a pursuit. But these things are really overrated because mm. in order to do that and to say I want to improve every day means I face every day not being good enough. Mm. <laughs> Oh, right? man. I'm not willing to live my life that way. Wait, that's like, that's damaging for my brain right now. <laughs> <laughs> right? Every day I'm not good enough. Yeah. And it's really, this boils down to is like the, the, it's the tyranny of some future imagined self. Yeah. No. That you're, I'm going to get there. But then you look back over your life. Have you ever gotten there? Like I said, I, if I showed your 12 year old self you now, you'd be like, I can't believe that happened to me. Right. But I'm in this weird comparison moment, too, where I'm like, oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Edit. sorry I'm trying to be really good with my mouth lately. Um, I haven't slipped once. Notice I that. was going to say the fact that I only lost it yeah. a little bit once or twice. I didn't. Wait, let's be real. Neither of us ever lost it, like, in terms of lost it in front of our team. We that's First of all, that's right. not your vibe, I don't think. And not my. Well, it is mine, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't lose it. Um, <laughs> But I'm in this like weird comparison mode where it's like, oh, five years ago, you you could have done this. And it's like, it's almost the opposite of the future self, but also then comparing to the previous self. And it's like, you cannot be living in the past because every day is a different day. Like, like there's, yeah, right? Well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you, you can't do that. I think the, co the, the key word is sincerity. Sincerity. I've, I've played like with this concept a lot. That. And it just seems that that's the thing that life really rewards is sincerity. And so you... You know, you wonder like, okay, why am I doing these things? Why, why do I do something that I don't want to do? Yeah. And it's because you're hoping to get something out. Oh my gosh, right? obviously. <laughs> yeah, so, but then that, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. And so you say like, you know, do I even want to play tennis at all? Yeah. And then you find like, well, I really do. You know, and now, I mean, we're past the time when tennis is going to really do anything for it. You know, we're right. not going to make a professional career no. or anything. But then you're like, <laughs> it's just as much fun as it, as it ever was. Yeah. You know, for me, just playing with Mark and Drew, I mean, just playing with my friends. Yeah. 
You know, I don't care what happens out there. I don't care who does what. It's just fun to be with my friends. Yeah. But you might be the only one on the court that thinks so. <laughs> <laughs> but we're all working. Or not we. Yeah. I, I know I am too. <laughs> I mean, it's all just as funny. You know, you take one ball, you put it in the back wall on the rise. I oh, mean, that's, that's hilarious, yeah. right? And then you, you hit an amazing shot. Yeah, that's you, pretty funny too, yeah, usually. But most people are like, oh, I can't believe I missed that shot. Yeah. But then they hit this amazing shot. I'm like, yeah, I expected that. Like, I mean, come on. It's right? true. It's, they're it's they're true. both equally likely. It's, it's like it's the bell curve, right? Yeah. You got the stuff over here and the stuff over here. Oh, my gosh. The rest of it's all in the middle. And that's where that's, that's where the fun is. Yeah, it's really where it is. So the idea of improving every day, well, what's the point? Why? Yeah. I mean, why? What's so bad about today's life that it needs to be better? That's a good question. Right? What's so bad about me today that needs to be better? That's what, so what opposite this? of the hustle culture that they're teaching us. <laughs> yeah, but you don't been – so, okay – the hustle culture, if we go there, it, you don't benefit from the hustle, hustle culture, but other people do, right? So it's just like when it's just like when you go on social media and it's free. You don't benefit, but somebody else benefits from you being there. True. Right? And then the idea is sold to you that, oh, you're benefiting from this. Oh, come on. That's such a bunch of baloney. Social media drives people freaking crazy. It drives. It's insane. It's so stupid. Right. I go back to the sincerity thing. Who's living their life sincere on social media? Exactly. Yeah, and that's why, in a sense, that's why most of the people, the influences everything. If you, I don't know this for a fact because I don't know any, <laughs> but I'm imagining if I just sat down and had a couple beers with one of these people, they'd be miserable. Oh, I thought you were going to say, like, ha-ha, we no, got them all. <laughs> no, they'd be, they'd be absolutely miserable. Um, right? Well, did you hear Elon this week, just since he brought it up, just losing his mind about advertising on I mean, I heard his a platform? Little bit. So he doesn't seem very happy. Yeah, um, no, but he also seems to be this guy who understands that the pursuit of happiness is overrated. E I don't I don't think people want to be happy. I think they just don't want to be unhappy. Oh. So I remember once Gran came in the office and he goes, I have a question for everyone. <laughs> this is good. And he was like, what is the one thing you want out of life? And he like asked everyone like separately. And I was the... <laughs> Everyone like said something very like specific, and like I was like to be happy, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, "Whoa, wait!" I, like I'm pretty sure Chris said, "Like I want a Porsche," like or something. Okay, like, check. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it was so weird, and I just remember Grand was like, "Wow, Michelle, you were the only one that said like this deep answer," and I'm like, "Well, first of all, I, I was the only." Female and probably the most emotional of all the people that he asked. But it was like, I still always remember that because he was like, oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but again, I think it's because you're, you grow up and this is like, this is what happy looks like. This is what we're working towards. But this goes full circle too. You've had life experiences. I've had life experiences. Happy is not million dollar houses or, you know, country club memberships or I mean sure you can be happy and have that but also you can lose everything in an instance and then what those things don't bring happiness you can be happy and have them but there they, you go. they yeah. certainly don't bring happiness yeah but it's almost as if you have to exercise that muscle yourself to realize it you do yeah you have to go through and you know buy the house and do that stuff and realize like okay I'm still the same yeah <laughs> Shoot. I'm still the same <laughs> idiot I was without My it. backhand that, that, still sucks. That's right. That, <laughs> nothing's changed. And you're like, wow. And now I got like a 30-year mortgage. I wish I would have figured this out a little bit right. earlier. You know? Oh, man. But, I don't know where to go from yeah, here. It's, it's no. just, it's, I just think people don't, they just don't want to be unhappy. Yeah. And that's, and then, but they're also the reason why they're unhappy. If they're making these ridiculous, um, lofty, like, like when you say, oh, someone says they don't want to lose or I want to be the best, like what's the best? Like what's your definition? There's, They're not even defined. Like we talk right, about yeah. like reaching goals or whatever in a reasonable way, creating goals. I mean, like I'm talking to someone right now about like where do you want to go to college? Like would it be something that you could play on the team, but like you're not going to USC, Stanford, UCLA to play college tennis, sorry, PS. Like you right. cannot just put that out there. You have to make reasonable. So maybe that's the thing. It's like everyone just puts us happy, the best. And it's like it's not even a thing that can be attained because there's no definition. Well, yeah. Well, even look, if you just pursue happiness, uh -huh. okay, then you say, oh, I'm going to take all the What moments. does that mean? Yeah, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that I don't experience any of the sad moments. Okay, well, 
most of the world's great art came from those sad moments. Right? And, so, and also what, what rounds you out as a person is the difficult times you go through. Right. So it's like saying, I'm just going to eat ice cream. I'm not having any <laughs> broccoli. <laughs> and it doesn't work. Right. You become malnourished that way. And it's the same with life. So, you know, this this endless pursuit of improvement and happiness, and these things, it's just another form of neuroses as far as I'm concerned. It's like this is what it is, you know, and and to say that, like, that's another phrase I hate. This is what it is. It is it, everything is what you make it. You make things what they are. Yeah. No, you know? agreed. So you, it's your daily life. Do, do you need to be better? You know, improvement. And, and even it's like you never even you never feel the improvement happening. No. So you look at a course, you're like, wow, I guess I hit the ball better than I did those years ago. But there was never a moment where I, it, it clicked. Right? Yeah. It just all happened, you know. So it's it's as if you don't really have any control over it anyway. Yeah. It's so interesting. There's so many parallels. <laughs> well, but tennis, I mean, so for us who spend so much time on the court, all of our great uh, discoveries about life came through tennis. Yeah. Right? That's, yeah. That's, I mean, I see the world as a tennis match. Yeah, no, sense. totally. And so it's because of all those discoveries that other people had in other aspects I had on the tennis court. You know, and what I, I'm, I'm always, and, and I think people miss the real point, the beauty of tennis, in, in my eyes, is that you can be down 6 0 5 and still win. Win. Yeah. yeah. You can still, you can still, it's not done yet. You can still prevail, but it challenges you to have the same sense of possibility in that situation as you did at 0 0. And that's a great metaphor for life. It actually be, is. Right? That's why I, tennis is the most perfect metaphor for life because you could be at any age of your life and start over. Yeah. As long as you believe, approach it with the same sense of possibility. Right? But if you say, oh, screw it, I'm old and I'm done. Yeah. I can't. Well, you're done. Yeah, you're right. You're just like the guys down 605 up packing it in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that was like, I think Matt said this about Nadal. He said, Nadal could be down two sets to love, 5 0 in the third win the fir first point of the sixth game and believe he's winning. Yep. Right? Yeah. That's what makes that guy awesome. Yeah. Now, put that into life. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> That's like, I, I, got, I don't have anything, anything to say. I'm like, game over. You won. <laughs> game set and match. <laughs> but you... I mean, could we get the team to buy into that? No. Right. I, uh, yeah, no, but that's a whole nother. That's, to get, ugh, it's so interesting because you want to almost have someone that's been bubble wrapped and like hasn't been exposed to anything. Okay, so that's a great observation. And that's why, we, this is something we did talk about the other night. Yeah. That's why I think great coaching is nothing. Okay, great coaching is the coach that all they do is insulate them from bad ideas. See, I, I, I will agree I, with you. I am not going to, I'm going to suggest if you say to me, how do I do this? We're going to explore it. Show me what you, what, show me what you think. But I'm not going to spend my other time with you insulating you from bad ideas. This doesn't work. This doesn't work. It's not that we know where it is. It's not that a great coach, I would say a really great coach, right? Doesn't ever say, I know exactly where it is and how to get there. They say, I know where it isn't. People are paying for shortcuts. See, that's the other side. They're, yeah. they're paying you, and they're saying, "I'm going to pay you 120 bucks an hour for that." No, I'm going to tell me where to put my hand. Do I step this way or that way? Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, 100. percent I had, um, I've got two little ones that I work with, and uh, they're clean. Right. <laughs> They've not been exposed, um, although. Their dad works here, and um, they started coming to matches. So slowly, he's starting. He's starting to see it. The girls are starting to see it. But I actually did a lesson with them yesterday. The oldest is in fifth grade, I think. The youngest is in third. Um, super natural, talented athlete. I don't like that. Sounds bad. Just very athletic. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm loving is that I'm. Again, I don't lean into the technical stuff, and someone's going to probably come in for me because of that. <laughs> but she, the oldest, is getting so much power just because she, I think, has fun hitting the ball. And she's experimenting with like her swing and her style, and especially on her backhand right now. 
she's played softball before, so she kind of gives me a little like softball vibe right, on the right, backhand. Right. She's doing great. I'm not going to change it because that is the way that she feels most comfortable hitting a backhand and she's executing. Now, of course, we're going to like work on depth and like targeting and stuff like that. But it's really cool to just like watch. She's improved so much in just a few like months because she's just out there like doing her thing. And when I ask her to like, okay, we're going to hit four hands today, like here. And she's just, I don't know. It just feels like very like she's not been told like, oh my gosh, you're grip is slightly off you right. need to change it why are you holding the racket like that and she's naturally figuring it out she's authoring her own game yes right? and, i mean that's the thing don't and don't, so don't you, tell you know anyone. by the time uh, so we had this happen on the team right by the time somebody gets to us they have so many the, the fingerprints of so many different people oh my gosh it's they don't insane, know what to do you guys it's right. insane <laughs> right and the and the better they are the more fingerprints in yeah them. and you can almost see you can just watch them sort of die on the vine and I would even go beyond to say the more lessons that you are going to, all the different ideas become very validated in their head because you're paying that money for them. And like, there's someone specific who served. <laughs> I think we both are like, oh man, <laughs> if right. we, whatever. Um, I just don't know how it got there. It's like malpractice. It really, it really I just is. don't know how it got there. So yeah. I'm very, yeah. There's actually a couple of people served now yeah. that I'm, so no one in particular, there were uh, several. Actually, you could put that for the whole team. I don't, I mean, I'm yeah. serious. Now I'm going all the way through <laughs> the lineup. I'm like, okay. I, I watched a player. Ugh, this was painful. And I think I was more upset about it than she was. She was serving 6-1 in the tiebreaker and end up losing the tiebreaker to lose the match and had three or four double faults in a row. That was a third set breaker? Ten, uh, ten second point? set to oh. stay in oh, okay. the match. Oh, wow. Yeah. In individuals to get the title. Oh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was crying. I was so sad. Like, actual tears. Anyways. <laughs> but, yes, to... Um, and we're not trying to like cut down other coaches. It's just it's just such a different way of. I might be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's, that's so evil. But we're sincere uh, about it. Yeah. No, it's not. I mean, it is to me. This idea is a form of malpractice. And tennis, you know, it's sort of American sports. But if you go to say European football, right? They're they're now buying uh, soccer. I mean, right? Right. They're they're, <laughs> they're buying into this ecological approach more, right? Which is sort of more brain as radio than computer and they're letting the players even the young players See? discover their games yes. and and this idea of prescribing movements right is going is is in all research okay is gone now in all major research the idea of prescriptive movements is gone and yet that's what dominates tennis yeah this churn and burn that goes on at clubs a guy gives the same lesson eight hours in a row mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then you get to the actual people who who could become better players and they get know? that same lesson well and they get the same <laughs> lesson but now they're locked in they're not allowed to author their game yeah you know and so i don't and and so i haven't been at like a circuit event in quite a while mm -hmm. i haven't coached at a pro event in a few years but i don't know what's going on now they allow coaching but if it's anything like that i mean that's a waste of time too it just confuses people right if, if somebody's feeding you in from uh, well, uh, strategies it becomes the constant like right. oh i hit that shot what does coach think yeah, I mean, I mean, the question is always like, you know, what are you seeing? Well, and I'm not saying that for everyone. Sorry, I, I should reiterate. There are a lot of players on tour that don't invoke their coach during the match, but yeah, and there's I don't definitely know, a lot that do. And I would like to hear, I don't know what the conversation is, yeah. right? If it's like, what are you seeing? Do you see, are you seeing something I'm not seeing? Or it's a, that's a different conversation. But if there's some prescription going out. See, yeah. Because like, you know, when you, when you look at, uh, you watch a player playing a match, you see their, their situation through your abilities. Yeah. No, those are not their abilities. No. Right? So, you know, instead of like prescribing something to them, you ask them what they're seeing. And when they tell you what they're seeing, you understand, oh, it makes perfect sense what you're doing. Yeah. Right? It's like we were talking about if you're stuck in a fire, right? And you can't get out and a bird lands and you say, hey, how do I get out of here? And the bird goes, well, duh, fly. <laughs> yeah. Right? 
<laughs> yeah. This is why advice doesn't really work. And the only advice that universally works is like so generic, like show up on time and wear clean underwear or something. It doesn't, <laughs> it, it doesn't even need to be given or it shouldn't right. need to be given. Yeah. Well, and then that kind of goes back because like um, parents are very, or at least some of the ones that I experienced this season, like technical and they're like, oh my gosh, you have to tell her that she needs to do this shot and come there and bring her in and lob her and then do that. And I'm like, you know, like you take what they have to say because you know they're nervous and everything else. But that is how I, that is not something that would ever come out of my mouth on a changeover. Like it just never would. And maybe that makes me, oops, I cussed again. Uh, Dang it. uh, (laughs) (laughs) And maybe that makes me, oh, we can bleep it. But maybe that makes me a bad coach in people's eyes or certain people's eyes. That's totally fine. Then I'm not the coach for you because I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to make you believe in yourself and like believe to play the tennis, believe in your tennis. And that's, you're all about that too. Yeah. I mean, the be best, the author. I played at Foothill and the, Tom Shaverton was a coach. That guy's am, he's amazing. Yeah. Right? An amazing human being, an amazing coach. And you'd be. What you, makes him amazing? Well, you'd be losing your mind out on the court and you think everything's falling apart and you come sit down and you're waiting for him to give you the, you yeah. know, do this and yeah. then, uh, do this at 47% and do this. <laughs> And he's like, hey, how's it going out here? Yeah, exactly. Right? They're like, what do you mean, how's it going? I'm like, losing my, I'm losing my mind. He's like, it looks like you got under control, really. I don't know what you're worried about. You're like, really? And it's right? like, what were you going to say yeah. in that changeover? Right. Oh, you're back in. You're not sliding, you know, like you're not brushing up enough. And then you got to get it six feet over the net, not four. And <laughs> Yeah, he'd come over and just, you know, give you a pat on the back. It looks fine. You got know. those. Yeah, you're fine. You know, but... You trusted him. Yeah. You had credibility. Right. And then somebody with that credibility says that to you, you're like, oh. But wow, like, imagine that's... if you empower someone to believe in their self. Yeah. Weird. I, right. <laughs> no matter how they hit the ball. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's not going to change in a match. No. Right? I mean, <laughs> I mean. You're not going to all of a sudden turn into Roger and Rafa, no matter what a coach says. Uh, no. Yeah, no. And even if you, if you, I mean, it's a fun thought experiment, but you take a bunch of kids, imagine, right? Imagine. And they, <laughs> imagine. And they all go to uh, lessons with Roger Federer. Same coach, same life, same everything. Same carpool, right? Same tournaments. Do they all show up? Do they all become Roger Federer's? No. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, well, mean, and then even when we were talking about the hard work, I was thinking like you could have a player working harder than someone like you could have a level, let's say a UTR level six player working harder than a UTR level nine player. But that doesn't mean the level six player is going to beat the level nine player because like that goes back. Like stop no. just saying like work harder. Like my level six player, she can work as hard as she wants. That doesn't mean she's ever going to, you know, like maybe she's maxed out at her level. Right. I mean, and that's OK. Yeah. I mean, not everybody's destined to be a great player. And no one. Yeah. And it, it's not like you're supposed and to be. And it's OK. It's, not. To be. It's like a it's game. Okay. And also like in going through college and then playing some pro ball, I met a lot of guys who didn't want to play pro ball. They yes. were very good. Very good. Yeah. And they didn't want to play any pro ball. Yeah. They're like, I, I, I just enjoy playing. I'm done. I it's so not, That's refreshing. Yeah. That's well, actually refreshing. Right. So. And then there were guys that were great players. I'm not going to use any names, but they didn't practice at all. Yeah. I'm sure you already know who I'm talking about. <laughs> there was a couple guys that were, became number one. They never practiced. It's wild. You're like, why did that gene miss me? Right? Oh, gosh. Okay, we're not going to the DNA because that will be another topic. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to see what the, some of the comments – are you keep, keeping bleh, Are you keeping your blog up to date or what? Uh, What's well, new? I'm working on – I got another project I'm working on that's that started showing up there, but I haven't put anything up there in probably yet. Okay. Well – But it's – it will be – Plug it. Some of this stuff. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure it will. Let's see. Um, I'm just reading through the comments – to see if there was anything that from last time that <laughs> we can talk yeah. about. Let's see. Why are you so dumb? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so, someone, I mean, it might have been spam, but I said this podcast is amazing. <laughs> uh. And then my response, which was five months ago, says, funny, I was just thinking it's time to have Tim on another episode. Life has always has an interesting way of working out. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Um, I still laugh. Because the way that Drew introduced me to you, I was like, what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you were mad. <laughs> I might have been mad. I show it all. I, I don't hide the emotions. Yeah. Talk about sincere. You know if I'm mad or not. <laughs> uh, no, but they, everyone seemed to like it. So um, if you guys are interested, let us know. We'll keep kind of babbling. 
<laughs> this happens at least once a week, I think. Um, oh, yeah. Whether it's on the tennis court or in the parking lot or at a brewery, <laughs> um, you can find us chatting about the, I don't know, the silliness of our sport. Oh, the brewery conversations are the best. Those ones are the best. We just got to bring a mic and maybe later today. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I think like other people are like, can you just stop talking about this? And I'm like, no, because that's that's what we love about tenant. Or I'm not going to speak for you, but that's. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the most interesting part, right? It's how we we all fascinating. We all crack up along the same fault lines. Yeah, that's what's really interesting. And even the, the language, we're we're really like handicapped by our language. Where we say it's mental, it's not mental, right? I mean, it's 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 a whole body. It's it, we we it registers, I think, in our mind, and we think, oh, that must be mental, but it's not mental because it takes over the whole body. Yeah. And as we even as we were talking last time, we don't know what the cause, so we say stuff like muscle memory. But there's yeah, no, it doesn't you know? Th- I this, know. This is a very arcane concept of you know muscle memory. Like we store these things inside of us. I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying. You know, yeah, where, where, <laughs> I'm trying to wrap my head around that one. <laughs> where where does it get stored? I don't know. You know, and 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 when the researchers go looking for, there's no evidence of these things. It's it's because we don't know how to say it. Right? Yeah, we we go through these playing repetitions or whatever, and, and repetition is about we're just playing, right? And then it gets easier. Yeah, and we don't know how that happens. But I was just gonna say about how we don't know. Okay. And even if we, experience, well, it could be experience. It could be, uh, you've been in this situation so many times that you know how to get yourself out of it. Yeah. Or you, you tuning there's, and also you're swimming in the sea of information that you don't see. So you just learn to dial yourself into that information. Right? Yeah. It's the education of attention is what we're really talking about. I think, where do I put my attention? Yeah. And you know that when you put it all on your strokes, okay, that might work in a practice situation, but in a, in a match play situation, you have to be aware of the other side. And so if you can only be aware of, say, three to five things at a moment, right? Mm. And one of those things has always been how I'm hitting the ball. Yeah. Okay. Well, now when you're over there, you have to be aware of the other side now because they're doing, trying to do things to you that you maybe don't want them to do. Well, well that kicks something to the curb. Yeah. Right? And now you're not used to this, you know, but this doesn't really work. But if you think of it as you're tuning into this information around you, right? And practice is just the fine tuning of it. Right? And even, yeah. I don't even like the word practice in a sense because what even the research shows that like they're just playing with some sort of um, you know constraints to it. This is called the constraints led approach. So if I put a constraint like you can't hit the ball in the middle of the court, mm-hmm. we're going to play a match, but you can't hit the ball in the middle of the court. So there's a useful constraint, right? And people like really perform better after it. It has a lot of transfer to match play later on. Yes. Right. And so there's no prescription in it. There's, you just this is out of play. And so you're learning to dial in different information, you, you know, and you have whatever the adjustments you make. Yeah. You know, and so my, some of my favorite games, it, it, sometimes the, the players you work with aren't good enough to do it. But re- I really love doing is, is introducing, you just playing points, maybe a 21 like ping pong. Yeah. And then five points in, you throw in a red dot ball. Yeah. Right? Now everything's different. Yeah. Right? Because you have to adapt. Yeah. <laughs> adaptation, the ability to adapt is a skill that and nobody ever practices. The problem with that too, and it's not the problem with that, but the problem with now, tennis, not now, in general, is someone will always complain. Right. Oh, that's the wrong ball. You can't do that. Right. That ball was dead. What's the point of this? Yes. Right. How many times did we go to practice and it was like, you can't do that. Like, right. like so many excuses. This is pointless. Bad feed. Like, what? Are you, like, what? <laughs> Have you played tennis so before? So you, you change it up as they're going along. And then, you know, another five points you make them change rackets can't use your own racket you have to now you have your feeling right you're feeling the game you're feeling for you're getting making these adjustments that's really useful stuff yeah as opposed to doing the same thing oh i mean how many balls i know as an average varsity player hit by now with all the coaching going on yeah and then the idea like what does it take to move the needle if you've already hit like half a million balls in your life and this is where we are what's it take to move the needle right i don't have enough time yeah. We should, we'll have to go out and hit next week and you just give me situational stuff. I like stuff like this. It's super fun. I know, and exactly. It, <laughs> and before guys would go to the, uh, the European season, the clay court season start up, right? I'd have them come over and we'd play with those big uh, PTR balls. Yeah. Right, because that's what a clay court point. And they're like, you know, swinging <laughs> crazy. like crazy. You cannot end a point with that oh ball. Oh my right? gosh. 
It's I mean, creative, though. You, like, have to, yeah. It's You're it's thinking like outside on of the yeah. box. But it's also, yeah, you take someone that, like, someone like me that doesn't want to play more than three balls, like, to have to figure out a way to end a point or force an error. Right. That's a whole other world. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, but it's just throwing different stimulus out there. Yeah. And knowing that doing the same thing over and over and over again, especially the same thing as everybody else, yeah. <laughs> doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Right? It, it really can't move the needle. I mean, I don't, it's, it's just, just such a weird strategy. In any business, if you said, oh, I'm going to do exactly what Microsoft does. Right? Well, they already like, do okay. it. They'd and go, they do bye. it, yeah. <laughs> the we bank would be that. like, okay, bye. And we then go. the other one's Apple, so. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to yeah. authentically script your own tennis. Yeah, and that's the, I mean, and then the role. Sincerely. Of the, yeah, the coaching would be like, it's, it's really, really enforcing that stuff. It's your game. Well, and allowing, yeah. You have to take responsibility. You can't put this on me. You have to take responsibility. Yeah. Right? And then when they're being insincere, you got to call them out. Yeah. You know, and if they don't want to deal with it, that's fine. They don't yeah. have to deal with it. It's not required, you know, but it's this, it is that standard. Like, this is your game. You tell me. What are you asking me for? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I just count every there we had one player on the varsity team and every single time I'd walk out on the court to talk to her the first thing she would say was I need to be more aggressive right <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like not even anything what I was gonna say and like right. who told you that it's like so ingrained in her head that she just always like I need to be I need to be aggressive I need to be aggressive and this girl like relies on her consistency and like drives people insane with it and like it was like no nah, that wasn't what I was gonna say but you know <laughs> right yeah, I mean that's your style yeah yeah but exactly you, but I mean you know nobody can play that way except you yeah because I don't even know what I'm doing so well, but that's when it's best when exactly it, see when it's best when you ha is when you have no idea what you're doing right. That's the sure. And it's like the what's best is when you have no idea what you're doing and you don't second guess because that makes it the best. Because when you're second guessing, that's when the mistakes start. And like, well, yeah. that's the other thing we were talking about the other night. So in a, in the average tennis match, the balls in play for like five percent of right. the time. That's and that's crazy. all. Everybody focuses every lesson, everything focuses on that five percent. Yeah. The ninety five percent of the time is when people put their heads up their butts. Right. <laughs> that's when that's when the wheels come off. And nobody deals with the 95%. Well, and also you brought it up earlier and I almost said something is like we talk about how it's so mental, right? But no one's practicing mental toughness or like I'm sure there are people practicing mental toughness. But like I can say for a fact that our high school practices were based more around situationals and like match play rather than like, OK, on the changeover, if she does this like or if you're losing, like slow down. And I didn't have a chance to really get into it until it was the end of the season and we experienced it from the other team. And I was like, oh man, right. there's a lot of learning we can do here, a lot. Like, what do you do when you've lost six games in a row in 15 minutes? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, you, that's- That's something that you cannot do while you're hitting a ball. Yeah, well, the whole, really, I mean, if you can just take yourself out of that environment entirely while you're there. Yeah. Right? You just remove the ego, okay, which remove is impossible. Remove the ego, but, impossible. Right. But, and the idea is like, okay, so what am I doing in this time? Yeah. Well, you can control. I mean, this is one thing I do say when I'm, ta when I'm coaching some of the kids. Like, okay, so if this match ends in the next 10 minutes, who wins, right? And if I'm saying it, you know, it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay, so then your mission now is to make this thing go more than 10 minutes. There's a lot of ways you can do that. You can take more time. You know, you're allowed 20 seconds in between exactly. points. Right? You can slow down. You can play longer points. But the idea is like survive 10 and minutes. And they look at you like, what yeah, is right. he talking about? Yeah. Survive 10 minutes. Okay. And you've done something. Yeah. Okay. Now you have an achievement. And then you'll find that after those 10 minutes, things have probably gotten a little bit better. Yeah. And now let's see if I can get another 10. And instead of trying to win now, we're just trying to like survive. Yeah. Just keep this thing going. Yeah. Right? No, totally. And so that's, that's a hint as to what can happen in a time in between points. But this idea that, oh, I'm done. They're like so much better yeah. than me. I got yeah. nothing. I'm just going to go for winners. I mean, what? Right? Yeah. Or whatever else comes up. Yeah. And my dad was right. I'll never amount to anything. <laughs> 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 whatever, oh, whatever it ends up being. <laughs> well. Right? It's never productive. <laughs> right. Until, you, under, until they, you, you give them. They don't un even understand. If I say, how do, we're going to work on the 95% of the time you're on the court. Well, it's invisible. It is invisible. So like, what are we working on? Yeah. It's all gooey. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, and weird and amorphous and nobody likes that. Like, let's just work on strokes, okay? Right, yeah. No, totally. <laughs> the amount of times I told players to slow down and they look at me like, like deer in the headlight. What do you mean slow down? Right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it, it's weird that they could be this advanced in terms of technique and not have any inkling that that's even on the map. It's crazy. Well, we're bringing it. <laughs> we're bringing it to slow high school. Right here. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap this one because we could talk uh, forever, but I, you probably don't want to listen. <laughs> <laughs> forever but stay tuned i'm sure there'll be more and uh let us know what you guys think and how you should give an assignment to our listeners oh what would it be what? i don't yeah pff, you tell me <laughs> uh, or yeah i'll take the assignment too <laughs> yeah look for the moment okay look for the moments when you're doing things for ulterior motives okay right there might be a lot for a lot of people <laughs> That's it. Okay, happy hitting. Go do that. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, man. It hurts That's... my brain some days. <laughs> That's a good one.